this is our first event uh, for Visa Innovation Program Spain edition. Maybe some of you are familiar with the program and we are quite happy to have you today. Uh, again, this will be a webinar format, so please uh, be free because your microphones and videos will not be open uh, instantaneously. If you want to ask any question to our panelists or about the program, you can write from Q&A session section or the chat button. So you are more than welcome to participate however you want. Uh, at the end of the event, uh, you will receive an email about this event itself and also some more materials that you are interested in. But for, without further ado, let me start with the program. So my name is Khan. I'm founder of Headquarters. Uh, we set it we set up headquarters in 2015 and for last few years we've been working with Visa along with other great partners uh, to find and nurture fintech ecosystem which is the greatest one uh, in the startup ecosystems. So I will talk about our program a little bit but before moving uh, forward let me just talk about the program. So in a minute I'm going to invite Eva. Eva is uh, fintech chief uh, in Southern Visa. So she's going to tell you about what's happening uh, in Visa and why we are doing this program. Then I will a little bit talk about the program details. And then we have innovating our partner, Rodrigo is going to come and talk about state of startup ecosystem in Spain. And after that, we have two panels, two quick panels where we can actually showcase the previous years of these programs with some startups and also some corporate partners, because I'm assuming uh, we have some uh, fintechs, some banks, some other large entities who can actually work with us uh, during this program, and which is what we are looking for and trying to tell you what we can help with. So let me invite Eva to stage. Eva, if you can uh, share your camera and microphone and let me turn this presentation off. And yeah. it's great to have you here. Uh, Eva is Southern Europe head of FinTechs and our biggest partner uh, for this program. So all the startups and I'm sure that the bank uh, people already know you but it's great to have you. I'm going to leave the stage to you so you can start with your welcome speech. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for, for hosting us and, and thank you to everyone for participating. Um, I'm going to do just a quick hello in Spanish. Uh, buenos días a todos, a todos los que os estéis incorporando hoy. Uh, la verdad es que nos hace mucha ilusión tener esta sesión con vosotros. Eh, algunos de vosotros ya conocéis el programa porque habéis tenido la oportunidad de discutirlo un poco con nosotros y, 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 y hemos tenido la oportunidad de explicaros el concepto, eh, pero para muchos quizás esta es la primera vez que oyáis que vais a hablar de él, como es un poco el programa eh, a través del cual queremos apoyar al ecosistema fintech y, y la verdad es que estamos muy agradecidos porque... Primero, esta es una idea muy buena que no tuvimos nosotros y es muy, es muy agradable poder aprovechar una experiencia muy positiva que se ha creado en, en otros mercados de nuestra región. Y segundo, lo que más nos ilusiona es que es una iniciativa que eh, nace para apoyar eh, a, al ecosistema fintech, pero, pero digamos que no de manera aislada, sino que lo que pretende precisamente es generar oportunidades de colaboración para que el ecosistema fintech pueda acelerar un poco su conexión con, eh, digamos, otros partners del ecosistema. Pagos es un tema tremendamente transversal, desde luego es un tema clave para nuestras entidades financieras cliente, pero también tenemos muchos retailers, tenemos otro tipo de partners con los que trabajamos en el ecosistema y estamos, la verdad, que deseando poder encontrar oportunidades de colaboración en las que podamos conectar a los diferentes mundos. So I switch to English very quickly. Um, the reason why we're doing these sessions in English is uh, for various reasons. So potentially uh, within the audience, we may have fintechs that are now based out of, uh, out of Spain. However, they have, um, a, let's say, geo-agnostic capabilities. So potentially they, they will be participating in this first edition. But more importantly, I think um, the great thing about today's session is that we have three partners from prior editions participating uh, with us today who are going to be sharing a little bit about their experience. So I basically would just like to talk about why we're doing this. Um, I think we, 
we're, we're a company that is uh, very often not very much present in, in industry events that are led by uh, different enablers within the market. Um, I think we have, uh, we have the objective of becoming a little more, uh, a little bit more visible, but visible in a useful way. So this is this is not you know about placing our logos all over the place. This is more about ensuring that whatever we do has very tangible effect into the ecosystem. Um, Rodrigo is going to talk uh, quite a bit around around fintech, its greatest opportunities, but also its challenges, I guess. Um, but I think one of them often is uh, the ability to connect with opportunities with different ways in which uh, really amazing innovative capabilities from the fintech ecosystem can become actionable capabilities in other environments as well. And, and this cooperation between larger companies, whether it's banks, whether it's retailers, with the, whether it's uh, IT large players, whether it's even public administration, that, uh, that I think if we have the opportunity to facilitate those conversations and connections, it will definitely lead to cooperation. And cooperation is critical because there's, there's no progress in silos. If the progress is not a joint progress and, and a progress that everyone is part of, it's limited progress or it's you know, not, not, not the progress that we would like to see, which should be more inclusive and should be further reaching to enable better solutions for consumers, for companies, for SMEs. So, so that's why we are here. Um, you will hear a little bit more both obviously from Rodrigo uh, talking about the fintech ecosystem, but you'll hear more about the program from Khan and you will hear their experience from our friends from Simply as an Ag Bank. But the reality is that this is a program that uh, the promise basically is enabling collaboration. Uh, it could be a beauty contest, it could be some sort of a, um, accelerator program focusing on really early stage MVP uh, um, uh, fintechs, but the reality is that we, we want to focus on what we think that we can add the most value. We're very thankful that this great idea actually comes with three very successful editions in Turkey, Greece, and, um, and Bulgaria. And, and, is, uh, and we're very much looking forward to contributing to the franchise and everything that this innovation program has achieved so far, but also ensuring that it works for Spain, it works for our market, for our fintechs, but also for banking partners and for uh, other partners of the ecosystem that we're working with. So very excited to have you here, whether you're hearing this for the first time or uh, you've heard it before, definitely you're gonna hear new things from the things that we have discussed uh, around this before. Uh, very thankful to have you, and I look forward to um, to working with you and making the most out of this first edition of this innovation program. So um, that's that's all I wanted to share. I'm not the most valuable in the agenda today, anyways. So thank you. <laughs> I mean, thank you very much. Like uh, I mentioned you before that as well. I'm quite jealous. Uh, I cannot do my speech in Spanish, but hopefully during the program I will start. Uh, a little bit more Spanish than I can right now. So Eva, thank you for everything, uh, quite valuable information. And as you mentioned, uh, we've been doing this program in three different regions and hopefully we are going to expand in Spain and even more because from the application so far we've seen, there's a demand for it. So I'm just going to cover a few of the things that Eva mentioned so far. Uh, this program is a equity-free program. Uh, created for Spain. Uh, we are looking forward to develop the program if we see more needs, uh, which we, I'm sure that we are going to see because yes, we are going to have fintechs and also we are going to include our bank partners, which you will also hear one of them from Turkey today because uh, what we see in fintech is significant. So Rodrigo will tell, talk about the Spanish market, but as far as, as we can see, last 20, 30 years, there are actually 300 you fintech unicorns in the world and we see so many value creation right now uh, i don't know uh, i'm sure that you are also feeling the same but we, are, we don't really use cash anymore this is not about the transactions too like uh, from buy now pay later solutions to some kind of insure tech solutions how we move our assets so it is an incredible change changing part in the world and we are looking forward to have all the companies who are interested in making those changes and as Visa headquarters Finnovating and also the banks and other retail partners that we are going to have in this program, uh, we are really happy to give you feedback because FinTech is a little bit tricky industry as well. 
generally what we do is B2B first because of the compliance and regulation issues. Then we go to B2C if it's possible. And for that, you need some people, some companies that you can trust. And this platform is where you can actually find those partners with Visa's help. So in this program, we are going to be talking about four major steps, like unlocking new payment flows, advancing new generation of payment experiences, and also SMEs and empowering SMEs is a key topic since uh, we have the COVID last two and a half years. Um, SMEs are either popping up and also having some kind of difficulties because of the stores are closed. So we see a huge change in e-commerce and we have more like loyalty structures for SMEs as well. And on the, if we can do everything right, then we will actually have like smarter and sustainable future for us. So these are the general topics and still we do have applications. And as we mentioned before, we've been doing this program uh, with our partners, Crowd Policy and Eleven in Greece, Bulgaria and Turkey. We are quite happy with it. Uh, the thing is, we roughly had like 600 startups applied to our program since 2019. And we have 49 startups uh, under this program. And they spent so many hours in mentorship or meetings, which is a greatest benefit in this program that can offer. But the good thing is we see that those companies are making so much progress. So we actually have one official unicorn from our programs, Payhope, and I'm hoping that Spain will bring more uh, fintechs along the way. We are trying to introduce our um, fintechs to investors as well, not just in these three countries, but also overall Europe or even MENA or US, depending on where they actually want to go, where is the size of the price for this uh, platform. So alongside of the visa and our partner support, uh, during this program, we help our startups to create POC and partnership opportunities where they can develop a new kind of business model or prove their business model with one of the banks or retail partners. Of course, we have more than uh, 400 people or VCs who are actively investing in companies. So we are happy to in do the introductions and happy to make you uh, craft your presentations and decks to get this funding. <clears throat> and even in, in Spain or the other countries, I'm sure that we have no problem if you want to expand to other countries, the ones that I mentioned before, but even the ones we haven't mentioned, like Germany, Poland, uh, we do have a lot of partners there too. So it is interesting to get more traction partners or uh, even investors from there. Uh, we do have a tech stack, uh, which comes with like Amazon uh, cloud servers to some tools that you can use like HubSpot. It is more detailed in our website, but you can definitely see it. So a uh, little bit about the timeline. So we started uh, application period and right now we are at the FinTech meetup. And the idea is to give you a little bit more information about what we are going to do and build. Uh, we will keep the applications open for like 11 more days. Then uh, that, there will be a selection committee. So uh, some companies, unfortunately, will not be joining us this program, maybe, but still, this is how we've seen in other countries. So in Turkey, if we selected, for example, five startups for the program, still some of the applications run through POCs with Visa or our partners, because the idea of this program is to create an ecosystem rather than just the impact with few startups. So please, if you believe that you are interested in this program or you think that you can uh, get some value out of this program, just apply. We will start our conversations and see if it's a good fit or not. Then uh, we will start in July. And starting from July, we will have our workshops, uh, mentorships, introductions, and we are planning to have a demo day where we can actually showcase all the startups who joined us in this program around January 2023. I mean, it looks like six months off right now, but the time flies so significantly. This is our experience so far. So I mentioned a few of the success stories, like uh, from Bulgaria, Payhope is incredible. Uh, from Greece, uh, we have uh, one of our startups, Evangelos will be us. So he will also mention about his 
uh, experiences. And also from Turkey, we have Hasso uh, and uh, Hasso's founder Serdar is with us today. So they will have a nice uh, panel. So if you have any kind of questions, you can always ask from chat and Q&A. That might be for the speakers that we have, or it can be general uh, feedback on the program. So uh, I mentioned most of the things on the program side. Of course, there are a lot of things to be discovered, but uh, what I want to do is to invite our friend Rodrigo from Finnovating. Uh, Rodrigo, if you can uh, open your video and your microphone, perfect. We can see you really well. Uh, thanks for joining. And I, I assume that you have a presentation to share with us, right? I'm personally quite interested as well uh, because uh, I definitely see Spain itself as a huge market, a lot of talented people and an opportunity to go to maybe like Latin America is something else as well. So uh, thank you for joining us. I'm leaving you on stage. Uh, stage is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Ken, and thank you very much, uh, Bisa, Ivan, and all the team. For us, it's a, a real pleasure to be here, first of all, uh, presenting the Spanish startup ecosystem. And, and on the other side, I'm uh, very, very happy to participate also in the Bisa Innovation Program. Thank you very much uh, for, for all the team of Bisa to think about uh, doing this kind of uh, very, very amazing initiatives uh, uh, in, a, in a country with a lot of future in terms of fintech and insurtech in, in, in Spain. So first of all, just a, a, a quick uh, introduction about myself. Um, I've, been, I've been working in the fintech industry during the last 12 years, and I've been participating in the creation of the largest fintech initiatives in Europe and Latin America. Um, and also obviously in Spain, and I've been have the opportunity to talk uh, and to, to, to invest, to create different fintechs. So I know very well uh, 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 the Spanish fintech ecosystem and all the, the positive and, and the, the challenge uh, issues in the, in, the, in, the, in the fintech ecosystem. I want to, <clears throat> I want to you to show you um, the first thing about, about the, the fintech or is the, the size of the of the Spanish uh, fintech ecosystem, and and I, just to start, we can we could follow you know the the, the, the maps. Uh, the maps are not uh, as not currently updated because we are not doing more more uh, maps anymore. But I'm going to show you later on what what are the, the real figures of the fintechs. But if we see the 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 the, the first uh, maps of the fintech industry in Spain. In, in, to 2016, we can see that we have just uh, maybe 60, 70 fintechs, and now we have more than 400 just fintechs. But the fintech or startup ecosystem is quite big, and we have to think about insurtechs, proptechs, legal techs, rec techs, wealth techs, because at the end, all of them are related with the, the finance uh, sector. And probably uh, Spain is one of the most uh, active uh, um, uh, industries or most active ecosystems in, in, in Europe. Um, in fact, uh, we go through through the, the innovating platform that we have the companies uh, the, the the active companies the real companies that we can find in Spain we have almost 100 the 1,300 active companies in terms of fintech insurtech proptechs in Spain so we can say uh, without any doubt that we have a very amazing uh, uh, country that a lot of companies are going to uh, and coming to Spain and a lot of companies are, are creating in, 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 the, in, the, in Spain and there is a, a lot of opportunities. Let me tell you now about uh, uh, what is the, 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 the support uh, that we are going to find in, 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 in the Spanish ecosystem. Uh, just to start, uh, just tell you about uh, a little bit about us. Uh, we are uh, um, a B2B platform that we are connecting thousands of uh, fintechs with corporations and investors and every company that are going to be the to, to growth and to connect, we, we, we can, we can, um, um, they can use uh, Finovita. And this is why we are also working with, uh, with this innovation uh, program of Visa to connect it and find the, the perfect companies for, for them. On the other side, we are going to show you that the Spanish FinTech and InsurTech Association that I have the, 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 the lack of being the president. Um, and in this association that uh, has been created in 2016, uh, we were one of the probably top three, top four fintech associations, pure uh, 
uh, associations, not, not, not public associations, um, created in the world. We have almost 200 members, uh, 13, 13 verticals of activity. And since the, the, the creation of the, the association, we have launched uh, eight uh, uh, white papers of different topics like uh, fintech, uh, sandbox, insurtech, uh, uh, payments, uh, lending, wealth tech, um, uh, rec tech, etc. So, so we are very, very active in these terms. Um, um, one of the most interesting things of Spain, as uh, Khan has mentioned before, is our geostrategic, uh, geostrategic uh, presence, that we are part of the Europe, so uh, this is why we are uh, the, the part of the European Digital Finance Association, that we, Spain was one of the, 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 the founders of this uh, uh, FinTech Alliance, but we are also part of the FinTech Iberoamerican Alliance, because um, part of our language, culture, and, and connections is, all, is also with Latin America. So just in one country, we are connecting with uh, the whole Europe, with the, the whole Latin America, and also, obviously, with the north of Africa and, and Middle East. Um, just let me uh, finish with the institutional support because we have um, not no much more time. Um, just to tell you that we have three supervisors in Spain, Bank of Spain, that is uh, focused in payments, lending, and, 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 and banks. On the other side, we have the, 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 the commission, the market commission, that is they are put the focus on on, on the, 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 the crowdfunding, crowd lending, and, and, and the, the, the savings. Just to tell that uh, 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 in Spain, we have the first European uh, license for crowd lending in the whole Europe. So we, we, we have a lot of support from the, the supervisors. And we have the third supervisor that is uh, the, the insurance and the wealth tech um, uh, insurance. And all of them have, uh, all of them have innovation programs and uh, in terms of everything related with the, with the, um, the, re the, the, the regulation and supervisor things, they are going to be very open with that. Um, and just to finish, we have the, the, the sandbox uh, that it was a, an initiative uh, supported by the FinTech Spanish FinTech Association. It has been launched in 2021, uh, two windows every year, more than one, one, 100 companies that uh, have applied to this initiative. And this is very open because the companies and corporations and any kind of, of profile can attend to the, to the sandbox. Um, but this is just for legal uh, things. It's, not, uh, it's a very complementary a program to the visa innovation program because uh, that uh, innovation program of, of, of visa is more focused on business and, and the growth and um, just to to end with the, the collaboration how how what is the collaboration in 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 in, in spain that uh, spain is in, in the top three uh, countries in terms of most uh, active uh, fintechs collaborating with corporations and following through the corporations uh, we have also we are in the three top uh, fintech, uh, sorry, corporations more active collaborating with with fintechs and and which kind of corporations? So always uh, Visa is on the top of uh, collaborating with with fintechs, with insurtechs, and and there, are, uh, there is a huge opportunity for every every startup, every company that that uh, uh, can join this this program in order to scale their their business. And just uh, this is an example of the the, the most uh, looked activities for by, by corporations in the last year where open banking, monopolization, and other kind of, of business. Just uh, to end some two, two conclusions, three conclusions. The first one is uh, that Spain is the third European fintech ecosystem. Um, so we have a, a, a huge opportunity here in, in Spain. The second conclusion is that uh, uh, Spain is, uh, is connecting Europe, Latin America, Middle East, and, and North Africa. So we have a, a huge opportunity to scale the, their businesses. And, and the third conclusion is that I uh, will um, encourage all the startups, all the fintechs, all the insurtechs that are uh, with us in this uh, this meetup to be part of the PISA Innovation Program because I cannot uh, see any better partner uh, than than PISA to 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 grow, to to co-create, or to scale. Uh, the company. So, so thank you very much uh, for the invitation. I'm very, very happy to collaborate with this this uh, amazing program. Uh, Rodrigo, thank you very much. I mean, before you leave, uh, you can turn off the presentation and we are really excited because uh, you guys are also working with a lot of different partners as well. And as you mentioned, it's not just payment, it's not just open banking. There are so many different verticals to uh, fintech because in terms of legacy, this is how we've seen like all big banks always have their like insurance companies along the private uh, 
equity market management companies, wealth management. So it is a huge industry. Like fintech is not about like card payments. It is a significant amount of uh, part. This is how most of the people are connected to it. But uh, we are looking forward to get your support on innovating level and all of the partners that you guys have. You definitely have a lot of experience in the Spanish market and the extending market along the way. So it is going to be a nice uh, addition and we are looking forward to see it. Maybe our startups who already graduated from our programs might be interested in those markets and we will send them uh, to your way. Thank you very much, Rodrigo. Thank you very much. Um, while we are talking about a lot of startups uh, that we also have in our programs, I want to have this panel. So Mili uh, from Visa, if you can come up and Sardar and Evangelos, uh, two founders in, uh, in the, an industry, which I believe most of the banks are looking after by now pay later solutions. So Mili, you are going to uh, moderate this session. And again, like, thank you very much for a lot of efforts for fin visa innovation program since we've been working together. Uh, I know on the other side, we have a lot of things too. So maybe Sardar and uh, Evangelos can also join us by turning up their cameras, then I can leave. I just want to make sure that Evangelos is, yes. I think Evangelos, you can turn it on right now. Perfect. So have a great panel guys. Uh, nice to see you all. Take care. Thank you, Graham. Uh, greetings, everyone. So the day has come. We have spent so much effort and basically we were, we were so excited to have this day today to tell you more about uh, Visa Innovation Program uh, and the success stories behind what we have experienced in other countries, Turkey, Bulgaria and Greece. Uh, so first, thank you for uh, your support, Innovating Team, Headquarters Team and especially Eva. Uh, Sardar, Evangelos, welcome. Uh, so uh, we, we are very excited to hear your achievements during Visa Innovation Program and your growth plans. So uh, Sardar, let's start with you, if that's okay. So okay. Uh, could you please quickly introduce yourself, tell us a little more about how did you decide to build your startup, what did you do, and what were the obstacles uh, you faced and your journey on Visa Innovation Program? Okay. Hello everyone. My name is Sardar Kolal. I am the co-founder of Haso, Hemen Asonrede, which is a buy now pay later system. Uh, maybe uh, you know, maybe you don't know. Buy now pay later helps uh, the shoppers to uh, buy their product today, and they can pay in installments. So uh, I had a company. I still have a company in e-commerce uh, business uh, that we, we have a platform, and we are working with very good uh, companies in Turkey. And we needed to uh, increase the sales, increase the average order value. And we were looking at some different projects. And by now, pay later system uh, came in front of us. And uh, we talked with our team. And we decided to uh, make a buy now, pay later system. But the first obstacle came to our attention that uh, the banking industry in Turkey is very advanced. And uh, we have a credit cards, uh, which uh, giving exact to the same idea that buy now pay later is that they are giving opportunity to pay uh, with installment with credit cards with more than 20 years so we didn't have a chance to compete with the banks and uh, we decided to do something different than the banks are doing and uh, we focused on uh, the targets that they didn't uh, focus on and we, we realized that there's an opportunity a big opportunity that we can go to the underbanked and unbanked population and we can attract with them with the buy now pay later system so what i'm trying to say is the obstacle that uh, we had in front of us helped actually uh, to grow in a different uh, way uh, helped us uh, to make our system differentiate from uh, other buy now pay later systems and in that way uh, we would be able to uh, have a chance to go to the developing countries uh, with the uh, system that we created so far. That's, I can't tell uh, right now. Sala, thank you so much for the intro and especially thank you for creating real impact for the un unbanked and underbanked in the Turkish market. 
uh, going back to Evangelos, Evangelos, uh, same here. Could you please uh, shortly introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your story and how did you come up with the idea of Simply Pulse? Hello, good morning, everybody. At first, I would like to thank you for the invitation and for the chance to introduce our solution to, to your panel. This is Evangelos from Simply Point of Sale Company in Greece. We are a software house that we design software tools, uh, especially for the growth of uh, micro SMEs and uh, retail companies. You can say that uh, we are developing uh, weapons for the very small business, useful tools that help them uh, get over their competition, uh, be more efficient, uh, and uh, take full advantage Take, take the full advantage of the technology uh, that they need in order to thrive uh, in the very demanding uh, retail uh, landscape. We are actually a company that fintech powers this retail business by taking advantage of PSD2 tools uh, and the flexibilities uh, required to implement regardless their size uh, innovative stuff like uh, account aggregation, payment initiation, loyalty system inventory management and uh, advanced automation and uh, give them the ability to offer their products and services in uh, the very well said uh, omni-channel experience. So we give the tools to enable them to operate in a modern way, both in store and online. Uh, Visa Innovation Program uh, was uh, was of a huge help uh, for our company uh, because we got the opportunity to to meet a, a big number of key stakeholders, uh, both in Greece and Europe wide, and uh, we made fantastic contacts uh, and uh, explored uh, collaborations uh, and synergies uh, with. Uh, both bank, uh, other fintech companies, and institutions. And uh, we finally also signed the proof of concept uh, agreement uh, with uh, the biggest Greek bank. This is Piraeus Bank. And uh, we created uh, a good integration with uh, their electronic fund transfer point of sale terminals uh, with our solution. and. Uh, this proof of concept uh, evolved uh, to a commercial product that is already serving the Greek market. Uh, Evangelos, thank you. Uh, first, you built a business that is touching upon uh, many hot topics of fintech ecosystem, empowering SMEs, uh, open banking, payment initiation. So uh, good luck on your journey once again, and we will come back to the, uh, your POC experience in a more detail. So uh, let's go into the uh, POC, uh, what we call proof of concept study. Thing. So basically, Visa Innovation Program is designed to facilitate collaboration among fintechs and uh, POC partners, be it banks, retailers, telecom companies. So anything is possible. So according to your experience, let's start with Sardar. So uh, during your uh, POC process, you had the chance to meet with various banks and cooperate with uh, banks in various verticals. So the one that excites us most is the one that you did with one of the largest uh, e-com retailers in Turkey. So could you uh, tell us about uh, the process, your experience? Okay. Uh, as you know, I am an alumni of the Visa Innovation Program. Uh, I'm proud of it. And uh, if you ask me uh, to tell you one, only one benefit uh, that I got out of the program, I would, say, I would say that your voice will be heard. That's very important. I mean, it doesn't matter how good your product is or your services is. Uh, as a startup, you need to build a confidence. And Visa Innovation Program helped us to achieve that goal, actually, because uh, Think about it. I mean, I was working with the companies, uh, my own companies were uh, using the system for more than two years, and uh, it was a very nice system. But to be able to 
get a big fish, you need to get a uh, bigger uh, fishing rod and uh, Visa Innovation help us to uh, meet with those companies and they, they listened to us. This is very important. I mean, we became visible uh, in front of those big companies and all of a sudden uh, we agreed one of them and now on the run uh, this month, we are gonna add two more. We achieved more than 500,000 users in a very short period of time. We are working with one of the biggest uh, marketplace in Turkey and we are gonna add a couple more as I told uh, this month. And it's very important. I mean, uh, the only thing I can tell is as I mentioned before, I mean, you need to be visible and uh, Visa Innovation Program helps us a lot uh, to be able to do that. Uh, Serdar, thank you for your kind words. Uh, honestly, we are very glad to hear these words from you. And we, uh, we are very glad to kind of uh, be able to help you grow your business. So uh, Evangelos, going back to you. Uh, so you had a POC experience with Preos Bank. Uh, could you elaborate a little more on your experience, the process and everything? Great. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, actually, our experience with uh, the whole process of, uh, of the POC development uh, was fantastic because uh, both parties from uh, Pireus Bank uh, and Crowd Policy for sure in Greece uh, on behalf of, uh, of the Visa Innovation Program helped us uh, making a, a full research uh, of uh, what was the most efficient uh, POC that uh, we can analyze. They helped us uh, with the overall product market fit uh, strategy, documenting everything, and uh, then proceeding to making uh, the appropriate uh, connections uh, in uh, both Visa organization and the uh, Piraeus Bank. Uh, this was evolve, uh, involving the commercial department, uh, the sales department, the sales and the branch departments of uh, Piraeus Bank, and uh, also the R&D department and the, and the IT department of the Piraeus Bank in order to analyze uh, the overall proof of concept uh, strategy documentation uh, from uh, from the stage uh, of the idea till uh, the final implementation uh, and optimization uh, we ended up uh, in a period of about uh, two and a half months and uh, and we ended up with a solution ready to be run in uh, in some pilot installations we we began the pilot installation in the three retail stores and uh, we gathered all the necessary data in order to verify and optimize uh, the proof of the proof of concept uh, efficiency accordingly and uh, we ended up with Pireus bank of uh, of adding the proof of concept to their portfolio of solutions uh, for payments uh, integration within uh, point, uh, within our uh, point of sale system offering, and uh, this was fantastic because uh, the exposure was uh, was big uh, both from our side to to introduce to our customer base uh, uh, a very major partnership uh, with uh, with the biggest Greek bank and also Piraeus Bank uh, from their side. Uh, also introduced to their customer base, to, to their retailers, they are serving thousands of retailers in uh, the Greek market, that uh, they are hearing the market and the technology needs, and the bank partners with uh, innovative software providers, and uh, in this way we can say we had uh, a win-win collaboration. This couldn't be achievable uh, without the help uh, of uh, Visa Innovation Program and uh, the integrity and the consistency of all the amazing guys from Crowd Policy here in Greece. Uh, thank you, Evangelos, for the very detailed explanation. Uh, this was uh, mainly the Actually, main... And, and, the, and, the, and the most major part uh, was the people, amazing people, that uh, we kept uh, contact and uh, we are discussing uh, and elaborating different things uh, and for sure, we have uh, many things to do in the future. This is just the beginning. Visa Innovation Program is, 
it's uh, it's just the spark. Once uh, you become an alumni and uh, you realize uh, how powerful and uh, dynamic is uh, the overall program, uh, and the, for sure the opportunity between the cohorts to make synergies and collaborations uh, between the companies, uh, we have to say that uh, is uh, the absolute approach to build uh, a healthy and efficient ecosystem. Exactly, that's the point. Uh, as Eva explained, so Visa Innovation Program is uh, not just build up, uh, let's select fintechs, try to organize some POC, part, uh, POC engagements with them, and then say goodbye. Uh, even after you become an alumni, we are trying to uh, build an ecosystem around Visa Innovation Program to further uh, develop the growth of uh, our fintechs. So thank you on that. Uh, going back to Sardar, uh, Sardar, uh, you joined the program, you be became an alumni, you had a very successful POC. So, of course, uh, naturally, you uh, got the attention of various investors. Uh, so, uh, you have a funding target. So, basically, what are your targets for the future? What are your goals? Where do you want to take Hasso? Actually, I like to be startup. No, I mean, even though you are working so hard, uh, so hard you are. Uh, I mean, you decide what to do and when to do in your own turn, which is very nice. But in some point, uh, even though you think that you are managing your company, uh, your business tells you what to do or what not to tell you. I mean, in that case, you realize that you are not startup anymore and the rules are changing. I mean, you need to find a way to be uh, uh, to to work uh, in different uh ways and you need money to uh, get uh, to to become a corporate actually not a startup anymore so in that case uh, that's uh, uh, the time that we are uh, talking with the investors that's how it's uh, built uh, actually we are using that money to grow of course uh, i mean we are planning to go to uh, different regions uh, starting with the uh, uh, Saudi Arabia, Malaysia, and uh, some of the uh, Eastern Europe countries. We already connected with a lot of uh, companies in those regions uh, through the investors, and we are going to be able to do uh, those. And uh, we are very excited about it, actually. We will see how it will turn, because our buy now, pay later system, as I told, is a little bit different than the other buy now, pay later system that we can use that system in developing countries, uh, which they don't have a credit relationship relations in their uh, regions. Uh, we have a solution for that. And that's the reason uh, we are very excited to work with the investors uh, to build uh, a branding uh, through the different uh, regions. Uh, basically looking forward to hearing the news about your funding round and international expansion. Uh, thank you, Sardar. Uh, Evangelos, back to you. Uh, we know that you are also uh, targeting international expansion. Uh, could you please tell us about uh, your goals in the future and expansion plans? Okay, thank you. Uh, our products uh, back in uh, 2015, uh, when we started uh, with a web-based inventory management system, because this was... Uh, the very humble beginnings uh, back in 2015. Uh, humble beginnings, but we started with a singular goal in mind. With a singular goal in mind, to to grow globally. And once uh, we have a software offering on the internet, it is already global. So uh, we began uh, our business in London in 2017. And uh, in 2017, uh, we began our Greek office because uh, the vast majority of uh, the headcount of simply are Greeks operating from different countries of the world. We actually we have people from all the, all over the world. We have we have people from Hong Kong, from the United Kingdom, from Germany, from Pakistan, from Japan. We are a, we're a worldwide and, and cross-cultural company. Uh, so our products uh, 
have a global approach uh, with multiple languages, uh, multiple currencies, uh, multiple tax models, uh, and uh, we we adopt its uh, its country's requirement uh, as uh, as a separate module uh, wherever this uh, is required. At this time, we have customers uh, from the United Kingdom, from Greece, uh, from Italy, and Bulgaria, and uh, we are looking forward uh, from. Uh, from a licensing perspective, because uh, we have some uh, ongoing uh, licensing uh, processes uh, in progress uh, from the tax authorities uh, of each country to launch uh, in three more uh, different uh, Balkan countries uh, in the next couple of years. So basically, as you mentioned, ex international expansion is always has some uh, hurdles. But hopefully you will overcome that, and the next hopefully the next time we host you in one of the visa innovation program events, you will be telling us about your expansion. Yes, and this is uh, very encouraging that uh, when we are exploring uh, potential markets, and you know we are discussing with uh, with the interested parties and uh, potential customers that uh, using. Uh, using the alumni ecosystem that uh, Visa Innovation Program has to offer, uh, it's now very easy for us uh, to have uh, ready some contacts and, uh, you know, to pick up a phone uh, and, uh, to, and call Melisan to ask uh, to ask him what's going on in the country or uh, who is going to be interested uh, or introduce us to other companies uh, that uh, we are chasing, uh, you know, relevant targets. Uh, and uh, this makes it uh, easier and uh, actually holds uh, an umbrella of trust uh, and uh, and global approach uh, between uh, the alumni companies uh, cohort wide uh, thank you Evan uh, basically thank you for putting your trust on us and we will hopefully uh, try to support you and uh, Khan, I guess thank you very much thank you very uh, much and I'm very sure for this <laughs> of course, uh, Khan, I guess we are covered. Uh, hopefully, uh, in the next event, uh, around this, uh, the, this time next year, we will be having Spanish fintechs, uh, fintechs selected for Spain program, uh, even from other countries, and we will be hearing their experiences in the Definitely. next one. So back to you. I mean, uh, thank you very much. Uh, it was a real pleasure because especially people who doesn't know the program yet, uh, the thing, the kind words that you guys said about the program is really, really good. And we know that you like the program and I hope that we will have more uh, friends for you as well, because as you said, uh, founder to founder learning and networking is the best. So, you know, inside out the potential partners. So guys, thank you very much. And I will move on to another side of the equation, uh, a corporate. Let's see how they are going to feel about the things that you mentioned. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Sardar. Thank, Thank you, Evangelos. <clears throat> um, moving to last part of our uh, event, uh, maybe uh, if we have Selim, uh, if he can turn on the camera, perfect. So uh, welcome, Selim. Uh, you've, you heard a few of the things that you, uh, from our startup's perspective, I think you are muted right now. I can ask, uh, perfect. Uh, now you are unmuted. Um, Selim, you are our friend from Akbank. Akbank is one of the most digital uh, banks in Turkey and you've been a good friend of our visa innovation program. Uh, is uh, the program that we are running in Turkey and you guys were quite interested in Bulgaria and Greece as well. So uh, before starting, would you like to introduce yourself to our friends who are listening right now? Yeah, thank you, Khan. Thank you for your invitation. It's great to be here. Uh, this is Selim uh, from Akbank Lab, uh, the innovation center of Akbank. We totally help business units within the company uh, to create uh, new products and services from scratch. So we have been running this innovation center since 2016 mm -hmm. and we have more than 30 projects so far. So I'm happy to share our experience with fintechs and startups with Spanish ecosystem also. I mean, 
Rodrigo also mentioned, Eva also mentioned about the same thing, like uh, fintechs are evolving. That includes banks as well, like uh, because you need to have your own services. So that I'm sure that all the Spanish banks have like innovation teams uh, working out uh, new ways of working with their clients or new kind of demands that they've been receiving. So um, I want to talk more about the startup collaborations that you guys did. So um, how do you do like um, how do you feel that uh, working with startups is a feasible method? Because uh, you've been working with some of the uh, startups that came out of Visa Innovation Program Turkey so far. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, it's totally feasible and uh, profitable uh, for the both sides. Uh, as Innovation Center, uh, we collaborate with startups in testing and providing uh, innovative services for Akbank customers for mm -hmm. consumer and corporate customers, let's say, in a, a fast possible way, actually. So our partners support our innovation processes by bringing uh, in their agility and immersive expertise of their work. So mm -hmm. it's totally meaningful for banks or any other telco companies uh, in the market. Uh, so our management model is uh, built on the idea that banks should collaborate with third parties like startups, technology companies, and more specifically fintechs. Mm -hmm. uh, so the prime feature of Akbank Lab uh, in the Turkish market is that we scout for the right solution and uh, services to respond to a need or to solve a problem for the business units within the bank. And when we find a business partner via a Visa Innovation Program, uh, it's uh, it may match our needs then we ideate the best scenario uh, to work on and then we move on uh, to the POC stage uh, which approximately takes uh, three to six months uh, in total and also we are proud to say that we have successfully led uh, more than 30 POCs uh, through through these innovation process and uh, half of them most of mo mostly half of them uh, are taken leave uh, with careful evaluations after POC. Yeah. Uh, so uh, to keep up the rewarding uh, work we do, we are always in close contact with local and global uh, ecosystem, uh, startup ecosystem, uh, looking for the next best thing uh, to do with them in a collaboration. Yeah. I mean, uh, talking about like global innovations, I think it was San Francisco for sure, maybe like seven, eight years ago now, it's significantly moved to Europe. Like uh, we have a strong uh, foothold in, I think like Israel, Dubai, London, Spain. Uh, the, the technology is here is I think like matching US right now. And in some cases, especially like in FinTech because it might require regional regulation because you cannot really apply it directly. So uh, I, I'm i quite happy that uh, those kind of networks can help a company like Akbank because when we talk about a bank, uh, it means that you have millions of users. And our founders were also talking about this. In FinTech, InsurTech, all connected uh, areas, the general blocker is the trust because people are a little bit uh, interested because they are going to put their assets, their money or their savings. So they want to make sure that this is a company that I can trust. I know like most of our founders don't have a trust issue, but in terms of that, we have a lot of compliance scenarios. And if they can work with you directly, definitely it's a huge win for them. So for all of the banks who are looking for it. So um, you've been working with uh, Paratik a fine dine and also Soli Club uh, during our like visa innovation program in Turkey. How do you evaluate those companies? Like, how do you create understand your needs and how do you uh, you mentioned them, evaluating them? Do you have a process for that? Uh, de definitely, we 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 already have very well structured process uh, for the innovation projects, especially. Mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, via the, the previous cohort within the uh, Visa Innovation Program, it was really a great uh, opportunity for us to meet with uh, local and global uh, outstanding fintechs. Uh, it was a really fruitful uh, process for us also. Uh, out of these three uh, companies that you have mentioned, uh, our project with Paratik is the one we have accomplished and taken leave uh, with our collaboration with them. 
Actually, after leading a successful project, we have introduced uh, the option to manage different bank accounts from our, our own banking platform for business owners. So it was one of the uh, first open banking use cases in Turkey. So for example, for this project, we, we defined very well uh, success metrics from the beginning of POC. So uh, it's our approach for, for, for all of the you know, ecosystem players uh, that they uh, need to know what, what, what project will be successful or not. And then we can uh, scale it up uh, within, the, within the local market. So it was one of the you know uh, most uh, successful uh, use case for us also. The second one is well, it was Fine Dine. The Fine Dine especially uh, offers fully digitalized uh, order and payment solutions for hospitality sector. Uh, we are in, we we had some uh, talks with them to create new opportunities for the, the Turkish market also. And the last one, last. Uh, startup partners within Visa Innovation Program. It was Solipay. Uh, our aim is to integrate the university ID cards into a digital wallet. Uh, with the help of this, university students will have access to uh, any university facilities such as gym or such as uh, having a book from library. So we are, we are currently in talks with different uh, universities to lay out the details of the project. So uh, I believe that it will be yeah. one of the uh, you know, uh, most important engagement uh, projects for us also with uh, SolPay. I mean, it, it sounds like a smart city solution as well, because this is how they are doing. So with their ID card, because universities always have it, uh, the ID card turns into a FinTech vehicle as well. Uh, they can either like pay with their cards, uh, or they can use it for like verification in campus behavior. So going in and out stuff. So it really sounds great. And it's always nice to have a partner like you, at least for Turkish market. Uh, and I'm going into another thing. Like uh, I've, as far as I know, you cooperated with Strengths in the Spanish market, right? And this is for, for your business service and uh for sme di digitalization this is what we covered as well like uh both uh, evangelos and sardar mentioned about this because still whatever we have we have a lot of uniforms but still real economy depends on smes like uh 90 percent of the people work uh, for smes and we want those smes to thrive so can you talk about the process of cooperation uh for this uh for entrepreneurs and banks point of view of course, uh, actually, the the strength, the project with strength was the the most uh, successful uh, project uh, for the previous year. Uh, our partnership with strength, uh, which is focused on uh, business finance management, which we call BFM, uh, designed as a new digital banking service that will help our SME customers uh, solve their moments of stress in financial matters and to increase their financial awareness, actually. Uh, with this project, uh, we aim to differentiate from traditional BFM tools, uh, such as forward-looking uh, personalized financial guidance through the use of historical data, especially transactional histor historical data, uh, user-friendly cash flow charts, uh, which is leading proactive participation for SMEs also, SME owners. Uh, identifying uh, financial behavior patterns, especially the, 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 this is one of the most important things for SMEs uh, to run their business. These all are uh, main differentiation points within the market. Uh, and also, uh, we position this new service as one of the most important features for Akbank Mobile, uh, which we which we continue to develop and update uh, for the new product and services for Akbank SME customers. Uh, Strengths actually is a, such, such an experienced partner uh, in integrating an AI-based, AI-powered system uh, throughout the customer financial journey. Uh, so as a result of this project, uh, we aim to increase the loyalty and the satisfaction of our SME customers in the long run, let's say, because it's not a, you know, uh, it's, it's a, it's a uh, free service actually within the Akmak mobile channel. Uh, that's why BFM is one of the most uh, powerful and innovative tools that we integrate to Akbank Mobile. It's also 
I think the most comprehensive BFM solution for SMEs in the Turkish market. Uh, so I believe that it's totally a strong success story of our partnership with, with Strength from Spain. Uh, they are based in Barcelona. I think yeah. the, 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 the other partnerships may come. So, so maybe the other fintechs based in Spain uh, get, uh, get some you know, uh, contact from Akbank and uh, to discuss on their new product and services for Turkish market as well. I mean, um, thank you for sharing all of this because, um, again, I'm sure that other banks in Turkey, Greece, or Bulgaria will be also interested in Spanish startups too. Like uh, some of the startups may not come from Spain as well, maybe like from Latin America too, because some of the services are quite universal if you are talking about like AI predictive algorithms or behavior. So um, I'm sure that you are going to meet with the selected startups in our batch in Spain as well. So for us, what I'm going just want to close with is um, the other good part of with the innovation program, we have a lot of stakeholders. So banks and retailers uh, is one part. The other part is, of course, startups. We have investors. But the good thing is, uh, as the founders are talking to each other, uh, because they want to understand a little bit more, maybe you will be sharing more what you have done so far. Because I know in corporate innovation, it is um, people need a little bit encouragement. Like everybody knows that they need to work with startups. but it is always a tough challenge because you have a lot of processes and you want to make sure that it is going to work. Sometimes the startups are not that stage. I mean, you wouldn't uh, get all the things that you would from a third party integrator because you used to work with large technology enablement companies rather than startups. So um, I think your stories for banks as well will make it clear for them to, if they want to start more on innovation. So. Thank you very much, Selim. Would you like to add anything else uh, for this panel? Nope. Thank you, Khan, for this opportunity. I'm very happy to be here and share our experience with uh, Visa Innovation Program and the startups. Uh, so I hope that the next cohort will be uh, great. And uh, I wish all of the attendees uh, success for during the, uh, this new cohort. Thank you very much. I mean, we are really looking forward to it and we are looking forward to bringing you guys with corporates, startups and all the possible combinations. And thanks for sharing your experiences. And that means a lot because again, like uh, everybody is a little bit shy. I'm sure that you have feel the same, maybe another company, not necessarily a bank, uh, gave you the uh, some good examples of working with startups and uh, programs like this one, which kind of ensures the quality of startups and also our trust in them because uh, i really want to thank you like with the team especially in the selection uh, part they really dig in they want to make sure that if you are going to call them with a startup uh, visa innovation program alumni we can uh, definitely trust them on what they are building and the vision actually fits with visa thank you very much selim uh, i think with this panel we are about to conclude our session today i've seen from chat some of our uh, friends just left uh, because it was like a one hour event but i'm really happy that everybody mentioned good things about the event itself uh, we are really looking forward to have this event in the near future and we are looking for to get any kind of comments like uh, the next ones might be in most more in uh, investment, but uh, you will get our emails for this program as well. Um, please feel free to join what, whenever you would like to do. I think our friends also shared uh, a feedback form. If you want to add anything, you can write definitely over there. You have our contacts. Uh, it is easy. And for all the panelists and speakers, if you want to turn on your camera and say goodbye, uh, then we can conclude this today's session. Nice to see you guys again. Like, thank you, awesome. Eva. Thank you, Millie. Uh, for thank you, Rodrigo, for making this happen, and also Sardar Evangelos. Uh, without great startups like you guys, uh, it doesn't make sense. But we see that this has a good impact. So, thank you very much for joining us and for our mm -hmm. audience. Hope to see you soon. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye.